Hi, I'm Dr. Zator Woodley, and today I am speaking with Dr. Juan Sede from Brigham Young University. We are answering questions for a colleague of ours, Dr. Mary Rice at the University of New Mexico. We're asking questions about our writing processes and what we do in writing and how that contributes to who we are professionally. So I'm gonna introduce myself. I'll let Dr. Sede introduce himself and then we'll start in on the question. So I'm Dr. Zatura Woodley. I'm an associate professor in learning design and technology at New Mexico State University. And I just became an associate professor a few, just a few weeks ago. Dr. Freire? Juan Freire, um, I am uh, an assistant professor at Brigham Young University. Before coming to Brigham Young, I was at New Mexico State University and I had the pleasure to be a colleague with Dr. Woodley. Yeah. I started back at Brigham Young with my tenure clock. So I'll be going up in very short. Hey, very good. So um, Dr. Freire and I um, have a couple of questions from Dr. Rice and we're going to answer those now, but he's right. We met um, at New Mexico State University and we're gonna share a little bit about what our partnership has been like ever since we met um, over six, uh, six years ago. All right, so first question, Dr. Freire, how does academic writing, oh, I'm sorry, We'll be looking at our notes up here and down here as we're answering the questions, okay? So, uh, Dr. Freire, first question. How does academic writing build professional relationships? Okay, so I would like to focus on the writing group we started back in 2014, six years now. I know. I can't <laughs> believe it. Like, I can't believe it's been six years. Time Unbelievable. Flies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So back in 2014, um, we started this writing group and it was, I mean, I could have never believed how important this group would have been for my professional career. Yeah. I actually started another writing group that didn't last more than a semester, I would say, but this writing group, the way we started it and it has been really supportive. Um, we have been meeting all these years, right? First in person when we yeah. were back at New Mexico State together, right? Yeah. And then I was never a fan of doing writing group online meetings. I was like, I remember Dr. Wattley, you would tell me sometimes like, let's meet online. I was like, eh, it's not gonna <laughs> work. I was not an online believer, <laughs> right? But now, I mean, since I moved to pre Yam, I was like, I, I need to move online have mm -hmm. this writing group meetings or I'm not gonna have them. And I'm so glad because yeah. um, it's, been, it's been all this time, um, it's been helpful in many different ways, right? Mm -hmm. I like how it is structured. We start with um, a check-in yep. in which we talk about what we did throughout the week, in which we talk about um, what are the goals for that writing group session. Yeah. We say, I'm going to be right, working on this, this, and this. For example, right? In yesterday, when we, had, when we held our meeting, I share, I'm going to be working on writing a literature review for a, a, for a paper I'm co-authoring with other colleagues, right? Mm -hmm. And so that was one example, right? Yeah. And then it could be anything, right? I, I, I also share how I was going to be uh, working on En Vivo, with a with a colleague uh, to do some data analysis. So and then at the end of the meeting, we talk about how we what we accomplished and how we went. And then we set our goals for till till we meet again, right? Like yeah. we say, I'm gonna keep working on this paper. I'm gonna yeah. do this, and I think it's been great. Yeah, I I agree. So all of the writing groups I've had. Um, the one with Dr. Freire and I, that's been the one that's lasted the longest. Um, and I think it's because both of us have a commitment. We took on a commitment almost from the day we met each other at New yep. Mexico State University. Um, we sought out mentoring and coaching. We ourselves as assistant professors went out and found people that were uh, along the pipeline uh, ahead of us in the tenure and promotion pipeline. And we 
ask them to come and teach us what they know so that right. we could get to that point. We had full professors come and talk to us because we committed to being full professors in this process, even though we were just brand new assistant professors. And one of the things we immediately took on was this writing group. And it had different iterations, like we would meet face to face. I remember us being downstairs <laughs> in O'Donnell Hall at New Mexico State, and we'd get in this little squinchy, right. small conference room. Um, and we bring our little lunches and we'd be down there doing what we needed to do to get our writing done. Um, and, and, and then when Dr. Fede um, took the position at B BYU, um, I remember getting a call one day, like getting emails, sure, we still have to continue. And I'm like, I agree with you, Juan, we do. And um, we developed this distance partnership writing group that has been uh, that has sustained us over the last four years we've been doing it completely online um, mm -hmm. and we figured out that what works best for us is a block of a uh, four hours during the course of the week and the days may change but we always have a four hour block of time so that we can get things done and like um, Dr. Fede shared we um, start off with a check-in which makes it different not only for us to talk about what we're going to write about but if we need to clear our space right. we get to get stuff out of the way and then um, start in on the writing and we always end by saying okay what did you get done and what are you going to do between now and the next time we get together because that again holds us uh, helps us be accountable so I think that our writing group together has been phenomenal in helping us to produce results like phenomenal what do you think yeah, it's really helped me avoid distractions. And mm -hmm. because being in academia, when you wanna when you wanna write, it's very easy to get distracted. Yeah, uh, you get emails. You they ask you to do this. You get knocks on your door. You, you know, if you have family responsibilities, yeah, uh, it can be many many things. Some of them could seem very reasonable, but that's why you need to block your time. And I say, agree. Oh, this is the time I need, I'm committed. Yeah. And people know that this semester, I mean, during the summer, Tuesdays, one to 5 p.m., I'm blocked. Yeah. I, cannot, I cannot do anything, right? And it's helped me um, be accountable. Like you yeah. was, was saying, being accountable really helps. This uh, little peer pressure of like, oh, I need to write, mm -hmm. has helped me, right? Not answering, and not replying emails, right. not checking anything, has right. really helped me write because otherwise writing never happens. Yeah, it, it gets done. Yep. There's always something that could be more important. Always, always. There will always be those things that try and distract you and take you off of your focus. Um, and during those times when you're writing, it happens to all of us, right? So you'll be writing and then all of a sudden your mind goes to something um, that you need to get done. And so that's why you have a notebook next to you where you can write down while you're writing, you have all these structures in place. You can write down what needs to be taken care of. If you do get distracted accidentally with email, that's why your partner is there. That's why your writing group people are there. So you can reach over to them and say, okay, listen, I got distracted. Now I'm going to get refocused. I just needed to let you know I'm going to get refocused, right? And so mm -hmm. it really does help to have a partner, to have someone, um, one or two. If you can get more people, that would be great. We didn't, we weren't able to get uh, people to, to keep up with us <laughs> <laughs> in the process. Like we invited people to join us, but um, that we did, we were never able to get people to consistently join us each week. But me and Juan, me and Dr. Fede, we kept at it. We're yeah. good. We did good, I think. Yeah, no, it's, it's been great. And it has not only helped us with, with writing, but get the motivation. I agree. Because, you know, you can be super motivated, but, you know, over the span of six years, it's okay to sometimes not be as motivated. Yeah. But if you are committed, yeah. because you know that, okay, I need to get the motivation, I need to get this. Yeah. Something happens, you just share it or you just yeah. put it aside, but then, you are focused and you start writing. And that's, yeah. that's, that makes a huge difference. I agree, I agree. So let me ask the second question that Dr. Rice had. She, the question is, how do you not let 
academic writing damage your personal relationships? So in other words, how do you prevent your writing, your writing schedule? Um, how do you have it not cause damage to any of the professional, or I would even say personal relationships you have? Right, right. Yeah, no, it's important, right? Because oftentimes you see that, I would say that if you tell a colleague, right, like, oh, um, sorry, I cannot go to this meeting because I need to write. They're going to look at like, oh, excuse me? Like, wow. no. The, I agree. Writing is not respected, right? If you have, if you say, no, I, I need to, so, so then the product is very respected, but the writing process right. is not. So saying, look, I, ha I'm, I have a meeting with a colleague or if I have a video conference call or I have, you know, mm -hmm. then it, it helps you, right? It helps you because they, oh, he has a meeting. Meetings are always respected. Like I agree. Meeting, nobody's going to say anything. Oh, he has a meeting. But I if agree. you say, I'm going to go to my office and write, we're like, no, I mean, you come to this meeting or do this or help me or, right. but if they knock on your door and you're like, well, I'm, I'm in a meeting. Like, That's oh, right. I'll come later. <laughs> So yeah. it helps you, it helps you uh, with professional relationships, not only with the peers in your writing group, right? Because you are uh, strengthening uh, re professional relationships, but also with other colleagues yep. in your department or whatever it is. So I think that's, that's, a, that's an answer, right, to this. Yeah, yeah I love the way, the way you say that what you're telling them about is this in meeting you have a standing meeting that you have to go to and you can't schedule anything on exactly. Wednesday afternoon. So even if they see you in your office, they come knocking on the door, you're in a meeting. All you have to do is show them your computer screen. For example, I've done that on more than one occasion, showed them my computer and like, oh, do you remember Dr. Fede? Oh, I didn't know, right? And so it gives exactly. you- Exactly. It gives you dedicated, uninterrupted work time, writing time. Like, and we all need that, especially those people that are early career faculty or faculty that are moving through the tenure and, process, uh, tenure and promotion process. You need that time because what it does for me professionally is it helps me get tenure and promotion. Exactly. And that is one of the things that scholars, even scholars of color in particular, need to really be mindful of. There are those things that you do that don't produce tenure and promotion. And if you are an early career faculty and you want to get move forward and advance at the institution, you need to do what you need to do in order to get promotion and tenure. And, it, and for me, in my tenure track um, and in Dr. Fede's tenure track, that's all about, are you producing peer reviewed journal articles? Like, are, you sh are they getting published? Are you publishing? And the only way you can publish is if you write. So it may not be the most wonderful time in your life every week for four hours or more, because we actually did more. We wrote together for four hours, but the only reason we produce what we produce is because we wrote more than four hours a week. Um, but our writing group together helped to us to be able to produce really good results and really great results. And that helps you be valued by your peers and it doesn't interfere with your professional relationships. Exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember that we we invited there was another colleague of ours right yeah. back then who was part of the writing group, but she would always find excuses and never actually became a real member of the writing group. And unfortunately, she dropped yeah. out. She's no longer yeah. in academia. Yeah. And, and it's sad, but uh, writing is hard. Writing it is hard. Writing is uh, very isolating. Um, you are there on your own, and having this writing time with other colleagues really helps you. Yeah. In every way, it helps. It it we, because we do not only write, but we help each other throughout the process. Yeah. Yeah. We mentor each other. If I, I go to a conference and I go to a to this uh, session in which they talk about how to be more productive, I know that when I go on Tuesday. I'm going to tell Satura, do you know what? We have to do this. <laughs> and, and, it, and it helps, right? And, and, it and it shares um, ideas and she gives me feedback and mm -hmm. we help each other. Yeah. So it's also for, for, you know, for to become more productive, to help throughout this process. Yeah. First generation PhDs. Yes. 
didn't have we didn't have these conversations at home as That's we right. are. And you mentioned a very important point, right? Being scholars of color, right? Yes. We have more barriers, we have more challenges that mainstream mentoring is not gonna um, solve, is not gonna address. Mm -hmm. So we are we go through different through different paths yeah. and, and helping each other, right, makes a huge difference. I, I, I remember when you went to a conference, right, and you came back and you were like, I cannot believe this, right? And right. So, so you came and shared, right? And I don't know if you, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I remember, well, there was probably more than one <laughs> because I'm, in, I'm in a STEM girl, right? So I'm in, in technologies. And um, you, you go to these conferences and you're thinking there are gonna be like these, these really enlightened pe people that are there, that men and women or people that are there that have done their work around racism. And then you get in the sessions and they're making these racist statements about people of color in online education. And I remember that conference like it was yesterday and I, I just couldn't wait to get back and I'm like, Juan, I just don't know. <laughs> what I'm going to do and, and having that sounding board from another person where you don't have to explain yourself about why that bothers you. Mm -hmm. They already know because you're in this group with this person who's a person of color who understands who traffics in conversations about race and class and gender, who's done their work. Um, and it makes a huge difference. I think the other thing that you talked about that really is important is this idea of community mm -hmm. about how because of who we are as as scholars as theorists um, our theories are rooted in this sense of community they're rooted in the cultural capital that we bring to the academy as people of color and because of that having the writing group even though you were writing about what you write of your mm -hmm research agenda and I'm writing on my research agenda and they haven't crossed, necessarily crossed, because we both are rooted in the same kinds of scholar, scholarship and theory, it does make a difference for us to be able to use one, utilize one another as sounding boards as we do our writing. And that, I have to say, our writing groups have made a huge difference for me on that because I get ideas from you by sharing where I am or where I'm stuck in the writing process. Mm -hmm. I'll share that with you. And then you're like, well, Zatra, have you thought about, what about this or what about that scholar? And you've sent me articles um, that I'm able to include and just sharing about the stuff that you're doing has made a huge difference mm -hmm. for me to get recentered and move on in the writing because you're right. The writing process can be very isolating. The tenure and promotion process at universities mm -hmm. is isolating and oppressive on levels. Mm -hmm. And so having another person that I can go to and have conversations about all of that has made a huge difference for me to get through. Yeah. Yeah, no, totally. It, because I mean, it can be, it can be toxic. I mean, it can be- I agree. You know, you don't know what to do, you yep. had a problem with this specific person at your institution, and yep. you're like, okay, who do I talk about this? Who's gonna understand me? Because I can talk to a family member, my mom, yep. but they don't know about they academia. Don't know. They don't know, right? So, so talking with someone makes a huge difference. So okay. I have found that this writing group is not only helpful to actually help us right but also for emotional purposes for I healing agree. and agree. it's this sacred moment that i have during my week like okay that's right i'm gonna write put everything aside and it helps me move forward i agree and i feel like i, I agree with you i count that as sacred time it's like a i always say that it was a divine connection that we made that first year i, I think it was the that, first no. week we got to New Mexico State. I'm so glad your office was near mine. Um, <laughs> because to, for us to make that connection, it really has made all the difference for me, understanding what it is to write. Because again, um, I became a junior faculty member. I became um, an early career faculty member at the university. And even with all, the, all my career in higher education, I was never in a tenure track faculty position which required me to publish so i had no experience or knowledge about that at all and you get in those uh faculty positions you start off as tenure track and it feels like 
even if you've been assigned a mentor, sometimes it just mm -hmm. feels like you're still in isolation. Like they're not helping mm -hmm. at the level that you need. If you have no knowledge at all, you don't even know what you don't know. Exactly. And so having a colleague that I could go to and say, okay, here's where I'm struggling and know that there wouldn't be some retaliation on a vote against me because I shared with my colleague my concerns or the things I was struggling with, that made all the difference in the world for me. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, the writing group, for me, I'm like the big fan of the writing group. And if, um, if, if anyone's interested in finding out more about that, they can always write to me or you and find out a little bit more about that. But here's what I wanna do now. I wanna give you an opportunity to show some of the results that have come because people will be like, okay, there's all this talking and you're talking about producing results, but now let's show them, let's give them a little taste of what we've gotten to produce because of these writing groups. So I'll start with you because you're like, I'm trying to catch up to you. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Okay. <laughs> you're doing great. Okay. I mean, so you asked me to pull up my Google Scholar, right? Yeah. And I remember before I started actually saying it. Yeah. Remember that when you would tell me like you should get a Google Scholar profile, and I was like, really? Okay. And I'm so helpful, right? That's an example of something that you you helped me with. So um, this is me here. Um, these are my four areas, uh, bilingual education, dual language education, culturally relevant sustaining pedagogy, and language education policy. When I went to New Mexico State, I had zero publication. Well, probably my dissertation I gave, right? But, um, yeah. but you know, it's not, it's not like a peer reviewed journal article, right? Which is what counts. I mean, nothing that counted towards, um, towards, um, towards, Right. Almost tenure, right? right. Uh, book review here, but uh, it didn't count because this was before and it's just a book review. But anyways, this has been so helpful because it has really helped me get focused and submit things. And as you can see here, these are some of my co-authors. Now, Dr. Wall is not there, right? Because you do not necessarily have to have a writing group with people who are strictly in your area. If they're in your area, perfect, but is not required right. for, to get all the benefits that Dr. Wally and I have been discussing. You don't need it, right? Um, so, so yeah, I mean, I'm um, the, little by little, you know, I'm, I'm getting more, more citations, which is something that they, they count, at least yeah. here. And yeah, that's a little bit about uh, my work, how throughout these six years, I've been able to get to to get the number of uh, publications required for right. promotion, at least at Brigham Young, right? And I would like to also share um, a little bit about my Vida mm -hmm. publications, right? The writing. Okay, so here here we are. Um, these are the publications, right? This is the section of publications, referee journal articles. So I have here something 2020, 2020, right? Uh, the, sometimes I have a gap, but not because I'm not writing, right? Because what happens usually is that they all get there and then boom, they all come out, right? Like I, ha I got four in 2020, but then I didn't have any into 1819. But then I have again like four in 2017 and three in 2016. Um, but the thing is to get things going through the pipeline. Um, I, something that Dr. Wall and I have been talking is the importance of always having something in progress. Uh, I have more, a couple more in progress, but I have to, uh, we have to discuss the author of, um, the author order, the order of authors. So I don't have it here in my vida, but I have more things in progress. I have three under review, and then I have um, these that are, we are resubmitting, and then this one in press that was already accepted and to a special issue. And it's important, right? And to, to get things throughout, through the pipeline, uh, right? And make sure that there's always something under review, something that is unrevised and resubmit, accepted with minor changes, if not impressed. And that's how we, we're doing it, right? And to me, it has been productive. I also have book chapters here. Um, one that was in 17, another one that is impressed that will come out in November. Um, of this year. 
So I'm going to stop sharing and, and yeah. All right. Excellent. So now I'm going to share mine. Hopefully I'm doing this right. So here's my Google Scholar page. And I too, when I started, I had nothing on this page um, except for my dissertation, which is right here from 2014. So I have my dissertation, but nothing else on this page. And over the years, it has grown and grown and grown. And I agree, there are some years where you have a bunch come out and some years where one comes out, some years where none come out. But um, now I have a really well uh, growing, a good trajectory, a well-developed tra trajectory that's happening with my um, Google Scholar page and with my journal articles. And so my journals are being cited, as you can see. Um, I also, along the way, developed co-authorships on a lot of my projects. Some are with graduate students, like doc, he's now Dr. Muchindanyu, but at the time he was uh, my graduate assistant. And one of the things that I was teaching him as I was learning how to publish, I was teaching him how to do the same thing. So you'll notice that I published with some of my colleagues at New Mexico State. I've also published with colleagues at um, agencies outside of the university, people at UNM like Dr. Mary Rice, people at Bo Boise State like pa uh, Dr. Patrick Lowenthal, um, and even uh, graduate students, Dr. Shamika, or she will be eventually Dr. Shamika Goddard, but she is a doc student at the University of Colorado, who I just happened to meet off of her YouTube channel um, and started inviting her to come and write with me about womanist technology, techno-womanism, and we ended up with a, a publication around technology and womanism, techno-womanism, and now she's a doctoral student at the University of Colorado. So there's this, this, uh, this way of building community that happens when you're actually writing, because then your other colleagues and scholars and students can see the work that you're doing. And by citing you, they're adding value. Um, they're really voting with their citations, right, on um, whether or not you're contributing to your field. So it gives you a sense of contribution. So this is my Google Scholar page, which now actually has stuff on it, which I'm so excited about. And then my CV, when you take a look at my CV under scholarship and creative activities, again, when I started um, in 2014, I only had um, my dissertation on here, but now um, there's my dissertation. Now I have a, a book under contract um, with Rutledge Pub Publishing and they came and found us based on a couple of the journal articles that I wrote. So a couple of articles they found from me on Google. Um, I had a special issue. We just, Dr. Rice, Dr. Lowenthal and I just put out a special issue and then here are all my peer review publications that are out. Some are accepted. Uh, this one is accepted. We're just waiting on them to tell us which volume and issue it is. But look at all of these journal articles that I've now had published since 2014. Um, like Dr. Ferreira said, we always want stuff that we have submitted that's under review or that's in a revise and resubmit. I have peer reviewed conference proceedings that are published. Um, technical papers that are non-peer reviewed, but they're papers that I've, I've published as well um, during this time, video production, that kind of thing. But um, I also always have some kind of scholarship in progress. Now, my scholarship in progress is smaller because now I have so many things submitted um, and so much stuff that's waiting to come out that my scholarship in progress has gotten smaller, but that will grow again. So you should always have things in those multiple pots, just like um, Dr. Freire is uh, sharing about. So that is my productivity, thanks to our writing circles. Thank you so much, Dr. Freire. Like, um, if we weren't doing these, there's no way I would have, I just received, like I was, um, Dr. Freire knows this, but I just received tenure and promotion, and there's no way I ever would have gotten that if we didn't have these writing circles, and I just didn't learn so much from being in them with you. So thank you so much for being my partner. And thank you so much for, I just wrote him last night and asked, would you be on a Zoom <laughs> and talk about writing? And he was immediately like, yes. 
and it hasn't even been 24 hours and we're already getting the video done. So I'd say that's pretty good. That's a pretty good partnership. Thank uh, you, thank you for being all these years and yeah, this is has been very proactive and I've learned a lot. Yeah, a lot. me too, me too. All right, any last words for those watching? Well, just uh, make sure that you uh, start writing. Uh, get a writing group going. Um, make sure that you have a clear understanding of what you want. Yeah. Um, why you want to have it, uh, why you're expecting. So everybody in the writing group agrees and moves forward, right? And be be constant, be diligent. Let me look at my yeah. my notes here in case I'm missing something. Invite others. Yeah. Invite uh, people who have gone through the process. If you're a doctoral student, invite people so they can talk to you, which is was one of Dr. Woodley's ideas of inviting people who were ahead of us and listen and listen and learn and something very important i would say is uh throughout this process you have to make an effort to be humble yes. and what i mean with that is that you have to be multiple um because you we're always learning we're always learners we do not know everything sometimes i've seen people that oh i got my phd i know everything i'm an expert mm -hmm. you, you don't have to tell me anything i mean that's gonna take a toll on you you yeah. have to it's a learning process a lifetime learning process okay. and writing is a lifetime learning process and publishing uh too you always there's always new things new publications new new conferences, new topics in the in emerging in the field. So being humble and learning can make a huge difference. That's yeah. why you have to listen to others, trust in others, yeah. and, and make sure that you build on, on, the, on other giants who were ahead of you. I agree. I agree. Those are really good. The things that I would end with are a couple of things that Dr. Cerez um, already pointed to. One is make that time sacred time. Like no matter what, you are keeping your appointment. Now, every once in a while, you might have to cancel because you're presenting at a conference on that day or because someone's child gets, you know, uh, may need you at that time. Like I have nieces and nephews. I've had to stop and take care of them for at times. So, but make that sacred time. That's really important and honor your commitment to one another. That makes a difference. Um, secondly, um, there's this, this uh, saying that I remember hearing, some will, some won't, so what? So some people will accept your invitation, some won't. Some will accept it and then fall off after a week. So that doesn't mean that you don't still need to keep writing. You need to still keep your appointment and keep writing and just find the right person in which to partner with. Um, and that will make a huge difference. So some will, some won't, so what? You keep writing no matter what. And finally, my last piece of advice about a writing would be, um, don't get all in your feelings when you get feedback from the, from the reviewers. <laughs> so, so what is humble? <laughs> exactly what he's saying about being humble. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't want to be humble, you learn how to be humble after yeah. people give you yeah. critique after you submitted your, those first couple of journal articles. Like mm -hmm. after those first, those first couple are rough. But I think one of the things that we both learned to do, because Dr. Fede shared about this in our writing group this week, is as soon as you get it back, then if they, you know, they've given you the feedback, whether they want your article, if they say, nope, you're rejected, you don't, we don't want you, then you just move on to the next one. Don't spend days, weeks, and months fretting over why didn't they take my journal article? There's too many other places you can submit it. So don't spend a month and a half worrying about, oh my God, am I not a good writer? No, it just wasn't right for that journal. Move on to the next one. Submit it within 15, 20 minutes. Make corrections that you think would make a difference. Take some of the feedback if you think it make a difference, but send it on to the next one. Don't, mm -hmm. don't get all in your keep feelings writing. about keep it. On. Keep it on, yeah. Just you keep going. I mean, yes, you have to be humble, but it doesn't mean that you have to let others step on you. You have Heard to be that. Humble. You have to be bold, you have to, to be strong and right. keep fighting and know that you're making a contribution to the field. I like agree. Like what they say, take the feedback that is going to make it stronger mm -hmm. and send it to another yeah. journal. 
keep working, keep writing. Do not I agree. Give up. I agree. All right, so Dr. Fleming, thanks Thank so you. much for being on the call. Perfect. I appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you.